Welcome. This is the Jenkins Governance Meeting. It's the 14th of October, 2024. Delighted to have everybody here. Let's be sure that I have the correct list. Uh, okay, Kevin, you don't. All right, good. All right. So leave that list. I mean, that's strange. Why would it format like that? Hmm, don't know. Okay. So here we go. All right. And I'll take the others out for now. Great. Topics I've got on the agenda for today include, well, the usual upcoming calendar, news, community activity, and governance topics. Uh, governance topics, there have been uh, two or three that have been discussed with the board first by email and then some others that are sort of long standing. So let's go with those. Are there any other topics that need to be added to the list that are not already on the list? Do we have CSB on the list? Oh, we do not. Oh, that's good. So would you like that in governance topics, community activity? Where would I you like it? Community activity sounds fine. Okay, great. Let me put it there. Jenkins content security policy page. I'll put it in there. Thanks, Basil. Yes, very good. Okay. Excellent. Okay, thanks. Anything else that needs to be add, added to the agenda? Okay, then let's go ahead. So upcoming calendar, we've got the election voter registration in progress. It ends the 31st of October. We currently have 69 registered voters. That's good. That's better than, I believe, the last two years of registrations. I'm still hoping we'll get above 80, but not sure. Weekly release 2.481 uh, coming tomorrow. LTS release candidate on Wednesday with a final release two weeks from Wednesday. And two major upcoming events associated with each other. FOSDEM 2025 will be on Saturday, the 1st of February, and sun Sunday, the 2nd of February, 2025, in Brussels. Jenkins has requested a stand, and we're going to have a contributor summit the day before. Uh, there in Brussels. Alyssa Tong is working on the, the venue. As far as we can tell, there's, we're expecting no issue. They were delighted to let us have it last year. And Bruno Verachten is coordinating the agenda. We'd love to see all of us there. In terms of news, Hacktoberfest is running now, and we've got upcoming release dates for 2.479.1 train. And note that there's a proposed two week break at the end of the calendar year so that we don't end up releasing. entries for the download page. Basel, I assume that continues on your to-do list? Yeah. Great. And then Kevin, the retire the Jenkins Chinese, the Chinese Jenkins site also on your to-do list? Yeah. Um, it's been, uh, the, it should be uh, November instead of October there, just with the prioritization for uh, the oh, right. update center migration. Uh, so that's taking priority more so than that. So that's all. Uh, and that, that makes sense. There's money to be saved by doing the update center migration. There really isn't any significant money to be saved by retiring the Chinese site. Great, thanks. Anything else on the on the action items? Okay, on community activity. Oh, uh, oh, before go ahead, we move on to the next topic, um, yes, I wanted to note that the uh, the Jetty project announced a vulnerability that was fixed in a previous release of Jetty. So there's no new release. Um, but I just got the email on their developer list. So it's it's a publicly announced vulnerability. We are not affected in 2.479 um, because we're already using the latest version. So um, I was afraid that that would impact us, but I don't think it will. Um, the um, the existing LTS line, I think, would be affected. Um, but I don't know if we have 
I don't know if it's important enough to cut like a 2.462 point, whatever, a new a new dot release there. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to note that. Okay, so the, and that one seems like we need more discussion with the security team. So the, the Jetty 12 version that we're using already has the fix in 2.479 right. and later. And I, I believe it's one of those things that um, does not affect us because it's just some like some method in a rarely used utility class that was, uh, you know, I don't think we're calling it anywhere. So Great. it's not, I don't think it's a serious risk, but it might be something that the security scanners will complain about on the existing okay. LTS line. So if they do complain, then we can just say, you know, wait for 2.479.1 and that will right. have the latest version. Good. Okay. So I've put that into the news section. Thanks very much, Basel. Good. Anything else on on the, that Jetty topic or other things on action items? Okay, then let's go on to community activity. So contributor spotlight continues to be a really positive, positive item. We now have nine full months. Actually, it's more like 10 months of Contributor Spotlights com completed. Thanks, Kevin, very much for your work on that. Uh, Adrien de Charpentier was just published and Devin Nussbaum is the next. So Adrien is the creator of Plugin Health Score and a contributor to the Spring Security Project. And Devin, Devin Nussbaum is, is a big contributor to the Jenkins Pipeline. Next topic was Jenkins Content Security Policy Project. Basel, do you wanna give us a, a progress report there or share with us how things are going? Yeah, the project has been running for a few weeks now. And in that time period, we've released CSP fixes for about a dozen plugins, um, as well as in Jenkins core. We run ATH with CSP mode enabled. And as of this morning, we've also done a search of static and a static analysis search of CSP violations across a Jenkins plugin ecosystem. So we are we are we we believe we'll be able to get ATH passing in restrictive CSP mode sometime this week or next. And with uh with both Yaroslav and Shlomo working on this over the next few months, we also think that it's reasonable to um fix all of the violations that we detected in the static search for any plugin with more than 10,000 installations uh, as well. So um, we might even go, we might even have more time to dip into some of the plugins between 1,000 and 10,000, but I'm not sure that we'll have time to fix all of them. Um, that's pretty far in the long tail of low install counts. So, um, but yeah, I just thought that would, I just wanted to give an update on that. So that project is sort of well underway by this point, and we'll continue to deliver more plugin fixes over the next few weeks and months. That's great. Thank you. So a uh, reminder to everyone that may be listening, this is funded by Alpha Omega Foundation. Uh, we're grateful, deeply grateful to Shlomo Dahan uh, for his willingness to work on it and Yaroslav Fenkin. So thanks very much to both of them. That's really great. Mm, I have a question on the system. Um, so I think I understand not now you're trying to fix a lot of plugins. Um, is there any plan that we have a static analysis afterwards that we can ensure that we do not make the same failures again? So can I pretend or have some yeah acceptance test harness or something like that? That I can run, so I don't get these errors anymore. We can, we can, we can definitely enable it in ATH by default once um, a few more plugins are fixed. Um, okay. And I am planning on, I am planning on running ATH with CSP um, in the future. I'm not sure if it's going to be on by default or opt in yet, but um, I have some code and it's, I have some basic code in ATH that will essentially start every test with restrictive CSP mode. Oh, okay. And that's been a good way to detect regressions reliably. Um, 
as far as the static analysis goes, um, it's not it's not very well developed yet. There are some false positives and false negatives in the static analysis. So I think we'd want to refine that a little bit further before we try to do it as part of every build. Um, it's not out of the question that we would do some more static analysis by default, but we'd want to make sure that we're not uh, being too disruptive with false positives and the like, or also not giving people false confidence with false negatives and the like. So that that static analysis was just developed about a day or two ago, and it's still pretty rough, or not rough, but it's just very, uh, very new. So um, hopefully we'll be able to refine that a little bit further. And yeah, if we if we can find a way to get it to a point where we're very confident about the results, then we could put that as part of plugin builds as well. Okay. Yeah, for me, it would be sufficient to have the ATH uh, thing running because my plugins are using ATH uh, mm -hmm. in my tests. And if I can add an option to enable it, it would be really helpful for me. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, okay. I agree. It's It's a great starting point. All right. Thanks. Good question, Lee. Th oh, Lee, thanks very much. Uh, any other questions? Any questions from others? Let's see. Our puzzle. I know one of the things is a monthly report to uh, to oh dear to Alpha Omega. Has has Bruno connected with you to start assembling that report? Yeah, he attended that meeting. And oh, good. Okay. He'll be attending the future meetings at least once a week. Maybe not every single daily meeting, but. Um, he's definitely in the loop. Very good. All right. Very, very good. Thanks. Anything else on Jenkins CSP project? Okay. Next is our governance topics then. So first on the list, we've had a discussion on the board mailing list and wanted to bring it to a, a formal vote here today. So the, the question was, we had a, what, what caused the catalyst for this was we had an issue that proposed to promote Palestine uh, as a way of encouraging, hey, let's do something more than just talk about stop the war in Ukraine, let's talk about Palestine. And the observation was, I think, made that okay, which geopolitical causes should the Jenkins project support and which should it not support? And the proposal is that we would stop declaring, focus on being an open source project without deciding which geopolitical causes we want to promote. Uh, and that would mean we'd need to remove the Ukraine messaging and close the issue that proposes to add messaging about Palestine. It would also let us avoid conversations about other geopolitical topics and spending our time on those instead of on software development. Comments from others. So Basel, Uli, the two of you have both been involved in those discussions. Yeah, I think this makes sense. And we've, we've displayed the Ukraine messaging for a little over two years now. So, uh, so yeah, I think it's fine to remove it at this time. Yeah. I also think the same thing. So we have it for two years or more. And it's, yeah, before we start such discussions for every war that starts somewhere in the world, it makes sense that we, yeah, say we are, we, we are focused on software engineering and not on these other things. Great, thank you. And Oh, how did my camera get lost? Sorry. Uh, so, Kevin, any comments or concerns from you? Uh, I agree. I just agree with Uli and Basel at this point. I think that it's good that we focus on the software development point of Jenkins. And it's nice to show support and choose sides and some things, but some other topics are a little bit more difficult to walk that middle ground or that line, that decision. And yeah, probably best we keep it neutral in terms of what we're supporting and doing. Great. All right. Thank you. 
So on the board mailing list, we had four votes, four votes in favor and one non-vote. Uh, let's call for the vote here. So um, those in favor, if you'd please show by raising your hand. Okay, I've got one. Oh, and me, I my hand is up. So, and Ke okay, we've got four for four here. Great. So uh, approved by all attending the meeting. Uh, three board members plus one officer. Great, thank you. Okay, and so we'll go ahead with that. Uh, Basel, are you willing to take the action item to implement that? Sure. Thank you, thanks very much. Any further discussion needed on that topic? Okay, so next topic then is $9,000 that's available for the Jenkins project at Software in the Public Interest. Okay, the history here is that the Jenkins project was formerly kept under Software in the Public Interest as it's our umbrella organization. Now we're under CDF and have been for a number of years. Um, while we were there at Software in the Public Interest, funds accumulated. Software in the public interest can't transfer those funds to anywhere that's not a 501c3 charity. And the Continuous Delivery Foundation is not that kind of charity. So they can't transfer the funds. They can, however, reimburse expenses that directly benefit the Jenkins project. Now, I had a couple of ideas. One is we could use it to fund travel to the Jenkins Contributor Summit in Brussels in February. That delays the expense a little bit. I think they might like to get the funds out before then, but it's clearly a benefit if we can have officers and board members attending there in Brussels for the Contributor Summit. Another idea was use it to fund t-shirt printing for the t-shirts that we bring to FOSDEM. Usually those have been donated by a corporate sponsor, but the project itself could, it could fund those and then gain the revenue that we get from selling them. And then a third idea that I had was possibly replace the, the computers in my test infrastructure that will be going dead when Microsoft ends life uh, by replacing them with new, new computers open to other suggestions. Are there other ideas that you want to bring to the board? Do we want to just continue the discussion by email? How would you like to handle it? Recommendations. The travel one sounds like the most compelling use case to me, but I'm fine with any of the options. And I'm also fine discussing it over email. Great, all right. Yeah, I also like the traveling idea. This is something we are doing at the university as well. We are trying to get companies found our projects at the university so that the students can go to such events. This is a very good opportunity. And I think we have a lot of contributors and officers who like to join and want to do if they yeah, need to pay on their own. Very good. All right. Well, so... I will explore that in more detail with the with the people from SPI. There, I suspect the $9,000, particularly, for instance, Chris Stern from Hong Kong is one of the candidates for, for the board. If Chris were, were elected to the board, uh, his travel or Chris's travel would be, um, would be on the order of several thousand dollars, right? Getting from Hong Kong to Brussels is not, not low cost that's half a world away. And so I think travel funding is a really good one to bring Chris so that they have an opportunity to attend if elected. Yeah, and I think the rest we can uh, try to find by email. So if right. someone else has an idea. Great, okay. Let's let's plan for that by email. Then we'll go right ahead, go ahead with that. And next board meeting, I hope to have um, a more thoroughly vetted proposal that that I've confirmed with SPI. Yes, they're willing to 
to reimburse the individuals that we identify. And we can talk about, okay, what would that mean? What do we think the approximate cost would be and what portion of the 9,000 will be used by that? Great, thank you, thanks very much. Anything else on the SPI funds? Okay, next topic then is governance board and officer voter registration. So here we've got 69 registered voters. Um, the candidate statements have been published and we're going forward. They're, they're all there. Please, to all of us, be sure you share with friends, whom, those who are Jenkins contributors, who may not have already registered, that they should go ahead and register to vote. We've got about two weeks left for voter registration and then we'll open the, the election for, we'll open the voting. Next topic was spring security six upgrade. Basil, maybe you want to give a summary here of how that's proceeding. Yeah, it's proceeding pretty well. We're um, on track for the LTS release at the end of the month. So I haven't been seeing any issues reported on the bug tracker and the only there's one issue that I'm aware of that's unresolved in the um, build failure analyzer plugin and there's a pull request already submitted to resolve it which has been open uh, for a little over a month already so whenever that is merged and released um, the issue count will be back down to zero. So um, yeah, from my perspective, this is looking pretty good to ship. Um, and, and that known failure in the build failure results analyzer is not requiring a lockstep upgrade, right? So it's not like LDAP no, or it, CAS, it's it is, just- It is requiring a lockstep upgrade, but it's oh, in a relatively minor I see. feature. Um, the feature is used by, I think around somewhere around 10,000 installations or some some smallish number like that. So it's not as bad as it was with say the LDAP plugin where you have to upgrade the plugin in lockstep or you can't log in using LDAP. Right. Um, it's much, much more, uh, much lower in severity than that. Great, thank you. May I ask a question, what is a lockstep? Oh, oh yes, yeah, sorry, Uli, lockstep in this case, Lockstep means that I can't upgrade, I must upgrade the plugin at the exact same time that I upgrade the Jenkins oh. core version. So, so I must, I, I can't upgrade the one without the other. And yeah. that means a complication because it means that my operating system upgrade can't, will bring me up something that isn't running. Right, so I'm running a, a Debian package that's installed. I do the upgrade, and that LDAP plugin will cause that upgraded Jenkins to stop because it's outdated. You, I have to upgrade upgrade the plugin. So Kevin will be writing some detailed documentation in the upgrade guide saying this is what you must do. It's a very special case. Yeah, we had a user who was um, in the Jira ticket who was asking, "Well, how do I upgrade the LDAP plugin if I can't log in?" Right. And the answer is, well, you know, you have to do it on the command line. And yeah, we tried our best to avoid cases like this as much as possible. Um, in the case of the LDAP plugin, it was unavoidable because the LDAP plugin was bundling a Spring Security LDAP jar inside of it. So that whole architecture essentially requires a lockstep upgrade. Okay. Good, good question. Thank you. And Kevin, that's a, that Uli's question is a hint. The word lockstep is not a well-known thing. So we need to be sure we explain clearly what that means. Thank you for asking Uli. That was very good. Yeah, especially not for uh, native speakers. So, so I never heard this uh, term. So, so. Right, exactly. Thank you. Thank you ex for bringing exactly that influence. That's, that's great. Thanks very much. That we'll, we'll make sure that the word is clearly described and, and the what the alternatives are are described in that in that upgrade guide. Anything else on Spring Security Six? Okay, last topic is on expenses, and here the story is that our expenses are in line. 
in all the all the accounts as far as i know we are just fine in terms of costs for the azure account that cdf funds so they budget about 5000 a month for us and we're well under that budget spend the microsoft donation we're using them for the bulk of the work on Spring Security 6, right? The ATH and the bomb work that we have to do there. And so there, the expenses have been using those funds well. And we'll actually, we're going to switch now in beginning in October, we've started the project to switch ci.jenkins.io off this environment for at least a few months to instead use the, cloud, the AWS donated account where we've got $60,000 available that expires 31 January. So, so we're, we're, we're doing just fine in terms of expenses and we'll continue those expenditures through so long as those do donations continue to exist. We are hopeful that AWS will renew the donation for us to extend it beyond the 31st of January. Any questions on donations? All right, let's, let's go ahead from there then. Thanks everybody. Anything else on the, that we need to discuss before we end for today? No, thank you. All right, thanks. thanks.